Welcome back to another episode of Talk Dead to Me. Now, that's the only Walking Dead podcast with the guts to start at Season 10. I am your host, Johnny O'Dell, and this week, I have no co-host. I made a cage in my basement that they escaped, apparently, because they're not there, and I see them on Instagram enjoying the holidays with their family. In retrospect, I shouldn't have made the cage out of paper mache. I thought it would be a fun project I saw on Etsy, and turns out, very easy to escape. Anyway, what the hell are we going to do in this week's episode that doubles as police evidence proving my schizophrenia? Well, I'm glad you asked. Second me. On this week's episode, we are going to be talking to Yvette Nicole Brown. She's our special guest of the week. You guys know her from Talking Dead, from Community, Lady and the Tramp, and even Avengers Endgame. Yeah, that's right. She was in the highest grossing movie of all time. Suck it, Avatar. So without further ado, let's go. Our guest this week is a beloved member of the Walking Dead family. You guys know her. She's an actress, screenwriter, philanthropist, and self-described nerd who you know from Community, The Odd Couple, Lady and the Tramp, and Avengers Endgame. She also wrote her first feature in 2019 called Always a Bridesmaid. I just watched it. It's hilarious. You guys should all watch it. It's Yvette Nicole Brown. Yvette, thank you so much for taking the time out to talk to us. So happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Uh, How have your holidays been? I saw on Instagram you were doing some work with MPTF. Yeah, I did a little volunteering early in the day, and then the rest of the day I just came home and watched movies with my mom and my dad and my dog. Oh, my God. That sounds amazing. And that's your uh, dog that you got from Lady and the Tramp, Harley, right? Yes, Harley was one of uh, Lady's doubles in the movie, and so when the film was over, all the dogs were up for adoption, and I got them. Oh, my gosh. So you literally have Lady with you. That's insane. <laughs> I literally have one of the ladies. <laughs> Not a lot of people can say they have a movie dog, but that's you. Um <laughs> Something that you and I actually have in common is we're both from Cleveland, and we now live in L.A. Um, yeah. What part What part uh, of Cleveland? I didn't know that. What part of Cleveland? I'm from Westlake, actually. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Sir. <laughs> well, it's not me. It's <laughs> just my parents. I just, you know, they just move me around. Um, but uh, you've actually said that moving to Los Angeles was one of the biggest risks you are, you've ever taken. Uh, so what was, I'm wondering, what was the most difficult part about moving to L.A., and what were your first few years out there like? Uh, the hardest part is that it's just really expensive, and I don't think, mm-hmm. at least I didn't realize, you can live, when you live in Cleveland and someone says something is expensive, there's a frame of reference, a Cleveland frame of reference, right? Right. I had no idea for the level of expensive California was. So I moved out here, had only saved like $500, and in my mind, well, that'll hold me like three or four months. Right. I was an idiot. So um, <laughs> it was just that realization of how much money every, everything is and how expensive rent is, all of that stuff really shocked me. So that was the biggest, like, learning curve for me. But then once I got here and realized how to make it work, it all got better. Yeah. you. um, It makes sense when I found out you were from Cleveland that it all made sense because of the whole Midwestern mentality. You know, people, um, you know, you're just, like, kinder to people, I feel. So, um, yeah. (laughs) Uh, So, obviously, everyone knows how passionate you are about your fandoms, from Walking Dead to Star Wars to Once Upon a Time. Uh, What does it take for a show or movie to, like, really grab you? You know, for me, I think it's more the heart of the show than even what the genre is. Because it's funny, I'm such a big Walking Dead fan, and people think that I love horror. I don't. I don't love horror. I don't love gore. Um, I was a big fan of Friday Night Lights. I don't care about football. These shows are not just about football or the zombie apocalypse. They're about the relationships that happen in that environment. So I love a show that has heart no matter what it's about. I just love the heart of a show. Speaking of Star Wars, you've said Yoda is the epitome of wisdom for you, and you even included a Yoda reference in your movie Always a Bridesmaid. Um, What would you say Baby Yoda is the epitome of? Oh, I would say spunk, uh, mischievousness. um, I don't. This is a long phrase, but right on timeness. Like Baby Yoda shows up, and he's clutched. He's always mm-hmm. there right when something's about to go terribly wrong, so um, and he fixes it. So I'd say that's, his, that's the essence of Baby Yoda, who I absolutely love. Oh, my gosh. Are you caught up on The Mandalorian? I am. I just saw the cliffhanger. I, I was one of the ones that started later, and I know it took a lot of um, willpower to do that, but I knew that as soon as an episode ended, I'd want to go right into the next one. So I let, like, five of them pile up before I even started. 
So I got spoiled <laughs> that Baby Yoda existed before I actually saw him, but I was fine. Oh. He's, just, he's lovely, but yeah, I'm all caught up now. Oh, that's great. I don't even care if it's a marketing thing. He's just so cute. I, I can't get enough of him. He's insane. I agree. Great. I agree. Mm-hmm. Um, quick question. If you could watch any show for the rest of your life, what could it be? You could only pick one. Oh, my God. Any show mm-hmm. for the rest of my life? Oh, that's a hard one. You know, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go rogue, and I'm gonna say a different world. Okay. I love the 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 college world that they created. I love that it was so Afrocentric, and um, it inspired a lot of my friends back in the day. A lot of us were encouraged to go to college because of a different world. So I'm gonna go with a different world. Um, one of the benefits of following you on social media is your inspirational quotes that you like to post. Uh, what quote or phrase or I don't know uh, passage sort of do you think about or use the most? Well, I have to go to the Bible. It's the best inspiration I can think of. And uh, Jeremiah twenty nine eleven says, For I know the thoughts I think towards you, say if the Lord thoughts to give you a future and an expected end. And it's basically encouragement that blankets your entire life where it's like God has got you. Like no matter what it looks like right now, no matter what you think it is right now, it is always going to get better because ultimately you will win. So that's my favorite scripture. And every inspirational quote I post is like a bit of that. It's always that basic idea that it's going to be okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, one of mine is actually from Game of Thrones. Tyrion said, once you've accepted your flaws, no one can use them against you. Ooh, yeah, I think about that. I know. I think about that all the time. Um, so to this date, you've appeared in 20 episodes of Talking Dead. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, could you explain really quick how you first got into The Walking Dead? I can't believe it's in 20 episodes. Um, I know. I, I, I can't remember the exact moment I realized that this was going to be a show that I knew I would love. I, it was either an ad I saw on AMC or an ad I saw in a magazine. But I remember, and I haven't gotten the answer to if this really existed, but I remember seeing Andy Lincoln on the horse going into the horde in black and white. It wasn't a color shot. And I just mm-hmm. remember how cool it looked to see this man on this horse in black and white, and it's, I don't know what it was. It just called to me, you know? So yeah. I think it was just meant to be that it would be a show that I would love. And, again, I'm not into gore, so that I would see that picture and go, i got to watch this show, is shocking to me. Um, and then Teen Dead came around um, because in the first season, people forget this because it's a huge hit now. In the first season, no one really knew what Talking Dead was. There weren't any talking sh- uh, talk shows about TV shows. And so right. I think they were having trouble getting people on the couch. Mm. And I was doing community at the time, but no one knew who I was, and so it was really hard for me to get a chance to be on a couch. So both our desperation (laughs) just kind of met up, and uh, my publicist at the time, Tay, she just called me, and she was like, hey, do you know the show The Walking Dead? I'm like, oh, my God, I love it. She said, do you want to talk about it? I'd love to. And then there it is. And now I can't believe 20 episodes is ridiculous. That's crazy. That's a lot of episodes. I know. I had IMDb it, but, uh, I mean, it makes sense. You know, you're one of the most beloved people in the fandom, so it's, you know, it's it's always a pleasure to have you there. Um, you're also one of the most vocal shippers of Daryl and Carol, a.k.a. the Carol ship. Um, now, has that changed at all this season? I'm sure it's like an unbreakable thing, but, you know, Carol's been kind of cray. Yeah, she's been a little cray, but, you know, not without reason. Uh, it has right. not changed, and I'd like to make sure I make it clear that I started that ship. Yep. I'm the okay. first one to talk about Carol and Daryl. Um, Noted. So no, I don't. I don't. It has not changed for me, and this is something I want to say for the listeners in regards to shipping. Um, be kind when you ship. Mm. The whole point of shipping is it's like it's something. It's like a dream your heart makes, right? It's yeah. your dream. It doesn't have to be anybody else's dream, and it never has to even become canon. I think we do the fandom a disservice when we're hateful about it. And also, if you know somebody like somebody else together, don't go on their page and be a jerk about it. Just enjoy your ship. Let them enjoy their ship, and let's just watch the show and see what happens. So, yeah, my Carol Love will go to the grave. I don't care what the writers write. That's their show. Shipping is mine. <laughs> this show is theirs. So I'm going to stick with my ship, and they can continue with Canyon. Canon, and it's fine. If the two ever meet up, yay. If not, it's all right. It's a TV show. Yeah. I agree. I, I run the social media for The Walking Dead, and it's just constant, like, shippers for Carol and Ezekiel or, you know, just literally anything else. And people are so toxic, so I'm glad you're keeping it positive. But let me say this, though. Nobody's hmm. worse than the Once Upon a Time shippers. And oh. then I'm just saying, like, respect. I know y'all love who you love, but that was it was like cage fights over there about that stuff. That's, it's just ridiculous. It's all – it's just dumb. It's uh, dumb. Sometimes you wonder if these people think – like, you know, people like Carol and Daryl are actually real. You know, they, they I, I wish they'd, you know, kind of devote that same energy to, you know, 
something real. Some, you know, we have an election coming up. You know, we got. <laughs> I, you know, I don't think you want to go there with me because we no, I won't. I won't. Hour. <laughs> I mean, but let me. Say I mean, I though. do, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let me say this about shipping. I don't even fault the people that really take it seriously. Like I love, I love that people love, and that's really what shipping is. It's somebody seeing something in two people and going, "Oh my God, it would be so great if they fell in love." and got married or had babies or whatever the dream is. I love that. That's amazing. The problem comes in when you think that because you think it's great, everyone else should think it's great too. No one else has to agree with you for you to enjoy your ship. You just enjoy your ship. Right. Enjoy your ship. That's all. And just leave everybody enjoy your else ship. alone. That's going to be the takeaway. Including Ash- the creators of the show. Stop being angry because somebody you want together ain't together. I've never gotten mad at the show because Daryl and Carol have not become canon, ever. And I never right. will. If, people, if they put Daryl with Connie, yay, that's canon. My ship will remain. <laughs> Both can exist. Both yes. can exist. That's amazing. Um, speaking of Daryl and Carol, last we left them, they were stuck in a cave with some other uh, favorites. Um, what do you think is going to happen with that? And is there anyone you think won't make it out of the cave? You know, there's quite a few people that, that could not make it out. And I don't know mm-hmm. if anybody would be flipping tables. And that's not any, that's no disparagement on any of the actors. It's just some characters haven't been as fleshed out. And we've been riding with some of these people for 10 years, eight years. So it's a little, we're a little more invested in some of them than the others. But um, I, I don't think it looks good for anybody right now. <clears throat> that's a lot of walkers. And that's a closed in cave. So I don't know what they do. Um, I, 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 the funny thing about me when we go into a hiatus, either the, the season ending or um, mid-season, I don't, I don't think about The Walking Dead until it's back on. I don't mm-hmm. do the fan theories. I remember when we were trying to figure out who Negan had killed. Everybody spent that whole summer, well, I think it's this, and I think I never, <laughs> ever speculated on who I thought it was because in my mind I'm going to find out soon enough, and I don't want to be feeling crazy you know, right. all summer. So that's oh, yeah. kind of how I feel. So they're in the cave. I've, I've sealed them up <laughs> in my mind, <laughs> and we'll figure out what happens when they come back. Oh, man. Uh, it's it's going to be crazy. Um, what, do, you, do you have any um, other predictions for the rest of the season and beyond? I feel like 2020 is going to be a big year with, you know, we got a new spinoff. Rick might be in a movie. You know, it's going to be crazy. It's exciting. Um, I, I don't know how they're going to deal with Alpha. Like, we already rehabilitated Negan. So I don't know that we're going to be able to rehabilitate everybody and show right. them the error of their way. So that means Alpha's got to go down. I just don't see how she can because she's really, really smart. I don't think she's smarter than Carol, but Carol's not operating from her brain right now. She's operating from emotion. There's a couple right. of dumb things that have happened or bad things that have happened to the group because uh, Carol's been too impulsive. So if Carol was at her peak mental, emotional capacity, going against Alpha, I'd be like, it's a no-brainer. But I'm nervous because Carol's not 100% there. So um, right. I don't know how they're going to get rid of Alpha, but I know she has to go, and that's, that's the conundrum we're in. <laughs> I feel you. Um, New Year's is coming up, and I wanted to see if uh, you could maybe give some resolutions or advice for some of our characters headed into 2020. Is that cool? Yes. All right, Daryl. Oh, Daryl. Um, I hope that he resolves to wash a little more, um, yep. <laughs> to give Dog a name, and to truly discover his love for Carol and how deep yeah. it is. Oh, that's nice. Well, then that brings me to Carol. Carol, I resolve that she finds at least one therapist in the zombie apocalypse and really sits down and talks it through. Um, and I want her to, to also resolve to just trust people a little more. And stop being such a lone wolf. Right. Um, Now, we know she's leaving at some point, but we'll still include her, Michonne. I I hope that Michonne is resolving to never believe that her man is dead and that she is out in the world running towards a Rick movie uh, to co-star in. Oh, man. That'd be great. She just finds, like, a Hollywood Reporter article about it, and she's like, (laughs) Right. Oh, he's alive. Yeah. Oh, good. Wait, what? Mm -hmm. What's The Walking Dead? Um, (laughs) Exactly. uh, (laughs) Alpha. Oh, I resolve that she dies. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> just want her to just, I mean, I would love for her to also uh, have the slot right after Carol in the therapist's office because she's cray-cray. But mm-hmm. um, if she could just resolve to, to die, that'd be great. <laughs> and uh, finally, Judith. Oh, Judith. Um, I think Judith should resolve to be um, the one that can step into her mom and dad's footsteps. 
I hope that she resolves to continue to be a badass. Mm-hmm. Um, and I hope that she resolves to um, find Megan or connect with Megan. I feel like that's going to be a very powerful connection. In the same way that he was, he had a soft spot for Carl. I think he's really his relationship with Judith is really going to be beautiful for both of them. I agree. Um, so, what are you looking forward to in 2020? What are your slash What are your resolutions? I don't usually make resolutions because I usually break them so soon into January. <laughs> so, um, I I hope. Uh, it's not a re- resolution, but I hope that 2020 brings a lot of peace and joy and contentment. I've stopped asking for things. I think if you ask for peace, joy, and contentment, then you'll find no matter what you have. That's my resolution. That's, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Um, well, Yvette, that's all I have. That's, uh, thanks so much for taking the time to talk to me. Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, tell the people where they can follow you on social media. You are always been one of the best follows. Yeah, oh, thank you so much. Um, on Twitter, mm-hmm. I'm at YNB, which is my initials. I'm political. You've been warned. On yep. um, Instagram and Facebook, it's at Yvette Nicole Brown, and it's a little softer and gentler over there. I'm not really on Facebook anymore since the election, but stuff from Instagram will repopulate on Facebook from time to time. Well, that's great. Well, we can't wait to see what you have next, and um, uh, hope to talk to you again soon. Thank you so much, honey. Have a great holiday season. Thanks, Yvette. You too. Bye. Bye.